What's going on, viewers? This is Lazarus, back again with another challenge video. This time, I'm going to be taking on the original Dead Space game. Ooh. But I will be doing it with a twist. I threw up a poll a few days ago, and I asked you guys to choose a game, and also a challenge for that game. Spoilers, it was Dead Space. And don't worry, if you're watching this and unfamiliar with the series, I'll try to keep you up to speed what's going on in the video. So, which one of these options got the most votes? Was it A, B, C? It was, it was surprise me. So, I decided to surprise myself by using a wheel of fortune, or misfortune. And the results? What the fuck? God, that, that sounds terrible for a, a Dead Space game. Anyway, will I be successful? Well, there's only one way to find out. Also, if you're a fan of challenges like me, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications. I plan on releasing a poll and video every week. Want to be a part of that? Hit that subscribe button. All right, with that out of the way, let's get ready, ladies and gentlemen, because it's showtime. Now, for this run, I'll be playing on normal mode, and the rules are simple, just don't use guns. Technically speaking, the plasma cutter is not a gun, and the game itself doesn't even classify it as a gun. But for the sake of the challenge, I would not be using it. I would only be using it to bash every enemy's face in. Starting off, we don't have our plasma cutter just yet, which means Isaac can't fight back. But after running for my life, I was finally able to reach the plasma cutter. Now, it was time to come up with a strategy on how I would fight back. Necromorphs are super aggressive, and they are good at sneaking up on you and waste no time to pounce on you when given a chance. For normal playthroughs, you can use your plasma cutter to cut off the limbs for massive damage. But since I cannot use the plasma cutter, I would have to be a little bit more creative. For 1v1s, I would bait enemies to try and attack me, so I could follow up on a counterattack. This was an extremely slow way to kill these things, but I guess this is my own personal hell that I created. But luckily, I wouldn't have to wait too long to acquire the stasis. You see, stasis gives me the ability to But I also had to use it sparingly, owing to the fact the only way to refill a backup is at stasis stations or buying stasis packs from the stores. However, this would still give me the edge I would need for group fights, and also tougher enemies, like the Twitchers and Brutes, but more on them later. Problems will soon start stacking up against me when the game decides to start throwing different types of enemies at me. Like the Black Necromorphs, which are stronger and more aggressive than their white counterparts. Oh god, I, I, I feel weird saying that. What's their real name? Okay. Enhance Necromorph. Anyway, I would sometimes have to use stasis to slow them down and take them out. And surprisingly, as intimidating as they look, the Brute was actually pretty easy. The strat here was to stasis him and run behind him and just break both of his legs. Once he was down and crawling around, he would then start throwing projectiles at you, which Isaac can grab in midair with his telekinesis. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right. Isaac has telekinesis. He doesn't have superpowers or anything like that, you know, this is like weird sci-fi magic stuff. Anyway, and once the brute was down, it was time to take on the most infamous part in the whole entire game. The stupid turret defense section. You, you, you cannot you cannot change my mind. This is the worst part in the whole entire game. But luckily, with me being a pro player that I am, I was able to make it through this part with only 2 HP. Boy, I hope they make some improvements on the remake for this part. <sighs> anyway, it was time to head back to the bridge. I came across one of the scariest mother lovers in the whole entire game. The Hunter. You see, the Hunter can stalk you and regenerate, which means he cannot be killed by normal methods. The only way to deal with him is to slow him down enough so you have time to get away. 
Eventually we come across a room where we can finally get him off our back. Which will require me to position him in the middle of this tube and we can freeze him. I guess you can say that I put the hunter's plans of killing me on ice. <laughs> And as we continued to navigate our way through the ship, more enemies would continue to show up, like the Weezers, and also the Wallmen. The Weezers were easy, since they can't fight back. However, this one was practically invincible. There was, there was no way, like I even nuked this guy and nothing happened. So unfortunately, I had to use the plasma cutter here. So that would be a gun use for me. The Guardian was a different beast. Running by him would be suicide. Also the fact that he could spawn near infinite pods that can shoot at you and explode if you get too close to them. Even worse, the only way I could damage him was with certain objects. But once I was able to find the right objects, I was finally able to take the guardian down. Oh yeah, and I did have to use the plasma cutter again because Isaac gets grabbed by this huge tentacle and there's no way around this but to shoot at the weak spot while you're being grabbed. So that is another gun use for me. And now, we finally reach the Leviathan. While this fight was super long, it was actually pretty easy. I didn't expect this to work because of how slow they move whenever you, you throw them, but I guess it hurts them. Honestly, you being kind of over dramatic about the whole thing. Uh, anyway, once I took its tentacles, he transitioned into his second phase, where he will become more aggressive and spit out more projectiles at me. But I was able to finish him off by throwing his own projectiles back at him. With him out of the way, we're more than halfway through the game. Now that we were more than halfway through the game, we get to a part where I need to defend the coal. Now this part was a little bit tricky to pull off, only because not only would I have to worry about my safety, but also the coals at the same time. Now this part took me a few tries to get right, because any objects I pick up and throw, I run a huge risk of them falling down this gap and never to be recovered again. Which means there will be little room for error here. I would have to be quick and accurate if I wanted to keep me and Nicole safe. Eventually I did find my rhythm and I was successful. And Nicole opened the door. I tried to give Nicole something to use so she can defend herself. But I guess she was just too slow at catching. When I tried to give her something else, she goes to me. I continued on slapping and stomping my way through the ship witnessing the most satisfying kills in the game, thanks to the Exploders. Damn, man, look at that, look! Now, unfortunately, I had to use the Plasma Cutter again. Not once, but four more times. I tried using other means, but sadly it didn't work. Also, I had to endure another turret section. Now, I don't know if I should count these as me using guns because I'm not using my own gun, but for the challenge sake, sadly, I will count them as me using guns. Now, this challenge was starting to go pretty smoothly until I reached the barracks, where there are like 12 to 15 enemies in this one room. It was nuts. I had dog men coming after me, the babies shooting at me, and the, the fast boys coming at me all from each side and corner. Now, I had to come up with a valuable strategy here. That would be to focus down the babies where I can dispatch them, slow down the twitchers, so I was able to hit them with a barrage of melee hits. And after a while, the room finally went silent which means it was my cue to move on to the next room. Now the next room was a little tricky because 
there's a wall of flames coming my way and there's six panels in this room that I would have to destroy to keep those flames from, well, killing me. So I would have to eh, do a little finessing around, move these objects here and there and make sure I had enough time and cover in order to beat down each panel. Once the panels were destroyed, the fire finally stopped. I grabbed what I needed and I fought the enhanced brute in a most epic battle. And I made my way back to the tram station. Rest in peace, Hammer. And with that, the chapter was completed. Now, chapters 10 and 11 were a breeze, since I pretty much had all the stasis and money that I ever needed. I did have to fight another guardian again in chapter 10. But since I knew how to handle one, he was easily dispatched. However, I did have to use a plasma cutter again. <sighs> God. Even though I ran into the hunter again, he was really chill this time around. You see, he wasn't chasing me this time. Maybe there was a glint of humanity that was starting to show up inside of him. Perhaps I was just wrong about him. Maybe he wasn't just an unstoppable killing machine. Perhaps I should learn from this to never judge a book by its cover. I decided it was time to make amends with this terrifying looking creature. Maybe society can learn Yeah, I felt pretty great when I was able to burn him to death. Now that we finally dealt with the hunter, we won't be seeing him ever again. Now we we're on to chapter 11. Now chapter 11 was just me staying on the move all the time, ignoring any enemies that I came across. As long as I was focused on the marker and get it to where I needed to be, I knew that I could complete this chapter pretty quickly. Chapter 12, pretty simple too, kinda. Except for this part where I'm getting swarm, trying to move the marker back to where it needed to be. It got a little intense there. Other than that, this part was a breeze. But once again, I did have to use a plasma cutter again. Matter of fact, not just once, twice. You see, there was two guardians there. I tried throwing dead bodies at them, but it just doesn't do any damage and there were no other objects in the room for me to throw at them. Finally, we are here at the final boss. Yeah, I had to use the plasma cutter here. I tried using the propane tanks. I ran out of the propane tanks. I tried using the boxes. The boxes just fall off the map. Yeah. So the only viable option was the plasma cutter. And with that, we boarded the ship. Nicole screamed at Isaac for throwing a propane tank at her. And then the credits rolled. It was fun playing this game again after more than 10 years. This game still holds up as one of my favorite horror games to date. And I can't wait to see what they do with the remake. Anyway, thanks for watching. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, friends, this is Lazarus signing off.